let's look at some a different type of distribution, a binomial distribution. So suppose we decide to record the gender of the next 25 newborns at a particular hospital. What is the chance that at least 15 are female? Or what's the chance that between 10 and 15 are female? Or out of the 25 newborns, how many can we expect to be female? We can answer these questions in a different type of a distribution called a binomial distribution. So when we have a binomial experiment, this consists of a sequ sequence of trials that there's a fixed number of trials and we let in, like we've been calling our sample size, be the fixed number of trials. Each trial is either a success or a failure, there's only two things that can happen. So if you think about it, flipping a coin is a binomial experiment. If I flip a coin 10 times, then the number of trials is 10. If I say, what's the probability I get heads, then a success is heads. Now don't let the term success make you think that's a positive thing, because I could be interested in the probability that I have a defective item and I consider that a success. The outcomes of different trials are independent. This is very important. So the probability of one trial has nothing to do, is not going to change the probability of the other, which means every single trial will have the same probability. So the binomial random variable x is defined as the number of successes observed. So when I say I want to find the probability that I had three girls out of 25 kids, then three would be the number of success, the number of girls. And the probability distribution for this random variable is a binomial probability distribution. Let n equal the number of independent trials in a binomial exper experiment, where p is the probability of success. Then if I want to find the probability of x successes in so many trials, I do this with this formula. Now, the little exclamation means factorial. So factorial, if I had like three factorial, that says start at 3 and then multiply all the way down to 1. So in other words, if I had 4 factorial, that says start at 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And as you can see, factorials grow very largely. And you can find this symbol in your calculator, which makes it certainly easier than to sit there and just start multiplying things. And so my n is my number of trials. My x is my number of success. p is my probability of a success. So 1 minus p would be a probability of failure. x is the number of successes. So n minus x would be the number of failures. This piece right here is called the combinations. So it can be written as ncx, which your calculators, Excel, also have this as well. And so this is just the number of ways I can get x successes. This extra part is giving me the probability. Notice that this probability distribution, we specify it in a formula, rather than the table that we did or a probability histogram. Let's say 60% of all computers sold by a large computer retailer are laptops and 40% are desktop models. The type of computer purchased by each of the next 12 customers will be recorded. So I'm going to define the random variable as x equals the number of laptops among these 12. So the binomial random variable x counts the number of laptops purchased. The purchase of a laptop is considered a success, so I can use the probability distribution of x is given by, I have 12 customers, my sample size, x is going to be the my interest, 
Okay, my success in the number that actually purchase a laptop, my probability of success, 60%. My probability of failure, 1 minus 0.6, so 0.4. My number of successes, I'm going to look at this to see what I'm interested in. And then my number of failures would be the sample size or the number of trials minus whatever I'm interested in. So let's say I want to know what is the probability that exactly four of the next 12 computers sold are laptops. So I'm looking for the probability the random variable equals four. I plug this into my formula. So I plug in a four where you see an X and I multiply it out and I get my probability which says if many groups of 12 purchases are examined, about 4.2% of the time, they're going to include exactly four laptops. Now, you can put this in your calculator or Excel. The order is a little different, where Excel, you use this built-in function, B-I-N-O-M-D-I-S-T, binomial distribution. The first number is your X, your number of successes, comma, N, your number of trials, comma, the probability of success, and then this one or zero has to do with if it's cumulative. This wanted exactly four, so it's not cumulative. If, it's, if I wanted to know from zero, one, two, three, four, meaning add up all those probabilities, I would have put a one. The TI-83 and 84 is just a little different because you put the number of trials first, you put the probability of success, and then you put your X value last. So the order is just a little different. What is the probability that between four and seven inclusive are laptops? So in other words, four, five, six, or seven. Well, as you can see, you have to find each one of these individually. Okay, so that's the hard part is, as you can see, these are very tedious, but you can find binomial probability tables. There, there are a few in our appendix, but the problem is, is they're not for n equals 12. There's one for 5, one for 10, one for 15, and 20, and that's the only issue is you, you can find an exact table for 12, and then you don't have to multiply all these out. You can just simply add the probabilities. What is the probability that between four and seven, so this is exclusive, meaning five or six. I don't care about four and seven. And so once again, I can find my probabilities. So notice that the probability definitely depends on, in this case, whether we have less than or less than or equal, which this is pretty normal if you have a discrete random variable versus the continuous where we said there wasn't a difference with continuous. So the table that's in your, the back of your book is it gives you for n of 5, 10, 15, 20, or 25, and then you move down the row for your value of your x, your number of successes, and then you go across to find your probability. So as you can imagine, there's only certain that you can't have you know a table for every single value of n for every single value of your probabilities so you're kind of limited here but at least if you have these values it's something very easy to do to find in the table if i have a binomial distribution and i want to find the average the mean i can find it by taking the number of trials n times the probability of a success and I can find the standard deviation by taking the square root of the number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure. So back to my laptop and computer example is I can find the mean and the standard deviation. The mean n was my number of trials, probability of success. So an average of 7.2 laptops. And then I found my standard deviation. I can also use the normal distribution to approximate a discrete distribution. So suppose we have this probability distribution. It's discrete, but we could center 
each one of these around the middle okay so I've centered it around this value and then I can draw a curve and I can say yeah this kind of looks like a bell-shaped curve so I could use it to approxima approximate with a normal distribution and when we center it here this is what we call continuity correction in other words we're kind of trying to assume that it's continuous by putting these values in here and of course you can see how you get them is you go half below and half above and so I can find a particular probability in this case I can now say that this is continuous okay and so if I want to exclude a and b then of course I would go plus one half and minus one half If I have x as a binomial random variable, I have n number of trials, I have my p probability of success, we know this is my mean, this is my standard deviation. If my mean is greater than or equal to 10, and if the n times 1 minus p, so in other words, this is the number of trials times the probability of success, and the number of trials times the probability of failure, if both of these are greater than or equal to 10, then we can approximate this with a normal distribution. If it's less than 10, either one of them, then the distribution is going to be too skewed and you can't use this technique. But if you combine this now with our continuity correction, then what we're seeing with our z values here is we're simply taking those half values, the half below, the half above, and if you look at this, this is my z-score. This is my value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and now I can use this continuity correction to be able to come up with my approximate normal, so now I can use my tables. For example, premature babies are born before 36 weeks, and those born before 34 weeks are most at risk. A study reported that 2% of births in the United States occur before 34 weeks. Suppose that a thousand births will be randomly selected and that the value of our random variable is the number of births that occur prior to 34 weeks. So I want to look at this and see could I use a normal distribution. I could approximate this. Well, I can see my number of trials times the probability of success. The 2% before 34 weeks is certainly greater than 10, and certainly the number of trials times the probability of failure. So I can actually approximate this with a normal distribution with my mean of 20 and my standard deviation of 4.427. Because remember, you need this for your formula to standardize it. So let's look at what is the probability that the number of babies in the sample of a thousand born prior to 34 weeks will be, be between 10 and 25 inclusive. So including those values. Notice I went a little bit below it here and a little bit above it. And so that gives me my 9.5, my 25.5, uh-oh, I hit the wrong button, <laughs> that I can now standardize this using my 9.5 minus my mean over the standard deviation, my 25.5 minus the mean over my standard deviation, and I can look these probabilities up in my table, and I can get my actual probability.